This video is sponsored by Stack. Over the last few days, I've been stress testing the new 16 inch MacBook Pro to see what kind of performance this machine is capable of. And so in this video, we're gonna go over not only some of the benchmark scores, but also what happened during some of my real world testing too. Before we get started, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to get notifications whenever we share a video. The machine that we are testing is the base eight core i9 model with the AMD Radeon 5500M graphics card, 16 gigabytes of RAM and the one terabyte SSD. Benchmark tests offer consumers an idea of the baseline performance for their machines, but it's not always reflective of real world usage habits. That's why we're gonna cover some of the real world usage scenarios but to give you an idea of the baseline, we're starting off with Geekbench 5 tests. The single core scores were pretty much identical between last similar spec 15 inch MacBook Pros that were released earlier this year and the new 16 inch MacBook Pros, but you'll see a moderate improvement in multi-core scores with the 16 inch over the 15. There's an even bigger difference when you're running the OpenCL and Metal tests with the dedicated graphics card, with both scores hovering around the 30,000 mark on the 16 inch, while the 15 inch failed to break 20,000 in both tests. I also ran the Cinebench R20 benchmark and the new MacBook Pro finished at around 3,272, which puts this new 16 inch machine behind a few powerhouse machines that carry somewhere between 12, 48 and even 60 cores. Apple is marketing the new 16 inch MacBook Pros for the pros. And so while these benchmarks might seem impressive, what really matters is how well this machine performs with the pro apps. Since I'm a video editor, I tested it out using Final Cut Pro, but I also compared render times with Premiere Pro as well. I exported a 4K five minute timeline, which is a pretty average timeline for me and probably for those of you out there who create videos similar to what I've been doing. And I was also running other apps to see how well the 16 gigs of RAM hold up alongside that GPU during export. And the MacBook Pro performed really well. The Final Cut Pro export took only two minutes and 35 seconds, which is half the time of the actual video itself. I did the same experiment in Premiere Pro, running apps in the background like QuickTime Pro for the screen recording that I was doing during the export and Safari with a bunch of other tabs open as well. I also had the Intel Power Gadget app to monitor performance and thermals. During these tests, the MacBook Pro gets just as hot as the other i9 MacBook Pros that have experienced thermal issues, but the power and the performance were never really throttled with the 16 inch MacBook Pro. In fact, the machine was actually trying to use even more power during these heavy stress tests. Anyways, the Premiere Pro export finished at around three minutes and five seconds, which was faster than I expected, but it's also been a long time since I last used Premiere Pro and the new 2020 updates have seemingly fixed a lot of issues. But nevertheless, I was surprised that it was pretty close to the Final Cut Pro export. These export tests were pretty much on par, if not faster than what I usually get out of my baseline iMac Pro, which has been my daily Mac machine for the last two years. But at that time, that machine had some pretty modest hardware inside. For those who might be wondering, I also ran Photoshop a lot with many other apps open in the background. And while I was seeing upwards of 70% of the Mac 16 gigs of memory being used, Performance was great. There were no issues whatsoever. Although the fans were kicking on a lot and they seemed to be a little louder than I remember, but nothing too crazy. Overall, performance on these new MacBook Pros, at least so far with the baseline i9 has been really good. These machines are extremely quick and definitely a good option for those pros out there that Apple is marketing this laptop towards. So let me know in the comment section down below what you think of the new 16 inch MacBook Pro and let me know if you're planning on picking one up and what configuration you're planning to go with. Also, before we end this video, I do wanna give you more information about today's sponsor, Stack. Stack is a free tabless web browser for all you multitaskers out there. It organizes and manages all of your widely used web applications into one app. Stack allows users to run multiple websites and apps simultaneously, side by side in vertically shaped cards so that you can scroll several social media feeds together and read messages from different sources at a glance without having to switch tabs. 
You can even group these cards in so-called stacks on the sidebar and have a stack for messaging, one for emails, or one stack for each of your projects. Best of all, Stack runs these apps in private sessions for a more secure experience. Now, Stack is free. However, for those professionals out there who need a little bit more or require multiple workspaces, unified search, touch bar support, and more, the Stack team is releasing Stack Pro by the end of November. And for those who are interested in receiving a 50% discount or just want to check it out in general, click the link in the description down below. This has been Dan with Mac Rumors. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you around in the next video.